Roger that, Red 2. Testing guns. Hey, we're not just gonna sit here and take this, are we? Why don't we get some speed on? Roger, Red 2. Engaging war emergency power, selecting low blower. Hey, Skipper, the back stop. Guess you know what that means. There must be some bad guys around. Okay, I uh, got my eyes peeled. Hey, Skipper, I see him. Switching to padlock view and selecting scan views. What? Wait a minute. Select what? Uh, damn, I haven't got enough buttons on my joystick. What? What do you mean you ain't got enough buttons, Skipper? What kind of joystick have you got? There just aren't any. So, here we go. Thrustmaster T-Flight Hotas X. Now, I haven't opened this uh, previously, so uh, this is as new to me as it is to you. Uh, so let's get this thing open. Um, and check it out. So, here we go. Bit of, uh, bit of polystyrene, doesn't have to get this thing upside down to, to get that out. We'll have the box out of the way. And we'll have this the right way around. So, what appears to be uh, an instruction book. And uh, that's pretty good packaging. Keeps the thing nice and safe in transit. So, a bit of polished iron. I'll hang on to that just in case the thing's broken. Uh, in case I have to set it back. So, we can see here a um, little bit of plastic. On the uh, on the connecting wire, and then your regulation uh, little cable ties that for that. Now, the interesting thing about this is that, of course, what it is is uh, it's one of those joysticks where you can split it in two. So you can see that there is a, a little bit of a, a kind of connector thing here uh, where you can latch the thing together if you want, or if you prefer, you can have the throttle on the left hand side and the stick on the right hand side, or I guess you could kind of have them the other way around, but uh, there's not really enough wire for you to easily do that. I guess if you really desperately wanted to, you could maybe uh, cut the wire and splice some, some more in, but I'm not sure I'd want to try that. Uh, so, it's a USB connection. Um, see how long that wire is, what do we reckon? That's maybe a couple of meters. So it's pretty good. It's not the longest wire ever, but um, it's good enough for good enough for most setups. Uh, now, weight-wise, there's a fair bit of weight in that actually. That's not bad. Um, and same with the throttle. In fact, the throttle weighs a little bit more, uh, I would say, than than the joystick. There's not much in it, but uh, I guess that means that uh, on a desk they're not really going to slide around too much. Uh, now, on the underneath of it, if we take a look. Um, there are, there's one, two, three, four, five, six little rubber feet to stop the thing sliding around. And then you've got a tensioner there for the actual joystick. So if you want to put a bit more tension on the thing, have a little bit more resistance there, you can do this. Uh, on the reverse side of the throttle, you've got one, two, three, four, again, five. Um, five little rubber feet to stop the thing moving around. Um, now, as far as, uh, as far as actual buttons are concerned, you've got your hatch switch for your views. You've got, I guess, a secondary fire button there. Uh, you've got another button there. And then when we come around the front, you've got one here. You've got your regulation trigger, like that. And then there are a couple of buttons on this side here. Uh, you've got one for mapping and you've got one for presets. Now, as I understand it, uh, this thing has built-in presets uh, for a few games so uh, and simulations and what have you. I know that it's got one for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, I'm not sure about all the other stuff. I guess we're going to find out about that uh, when we check the manual out. Uh, but yeah, there are some built-in presets with the thing. Uh, as far as um, how this sits in the hand, that's pretty good, but again, um, like most most joysticks, it's a right-handed stick. Um, it's got quite a nice sort of springy feel to it, and it feels fairly solid. Um, looks pretty good as well, you know, it's not a massive desk 
top footprint so uh, yeah I guess it'll fit pretty good on the, on the desktop so there's a fair few buttons on there um, and then looking at the throttle what we've got is we've got some buttons here like that and then you've got a series of buttons here and then you've got a I guess you could use it for a rudder control there and then you've got a couple of buttons there so that sits pretty well um, and it's got not the nicest feel of a throttle ever. <laughs> it's uh, I, I think it could perhaps do with a little bit more resistance. But interestingly, what it has got, if you see this uh, see this marking here where it goes from white to red, uh, it's got a little bit of a detent in the middle, or detente if you prefer. <laughs> and I guess what you could probably do with that is have you know that up to. To sort of normal throttle and then I don't know war emergency power or uh, or afterburners or what have you uh, when you go through that uh, that detent there so uh, that's pretty good um, and it it seems to to sort of uh, connect together pretty well I mean you've got a little latch thing there um, so I guess you you kind of sort of dropping it in there uh, yeah there's uh, yeah, there's a couple of screws there to to allow you to fasten it. I think personally, I'd probably prefer it for to have them them a, a little bit separated and stuff like that. Now, uh, of course, the big thing with um, with flight simulators, uh, as as alluded to in that little jokey intro, is not just the buttons, but how many axes you've got. Um, so, obviously, a joystick, you've got uh, typically your left and right for your ailerons, and your forward and backwards for your elevator and stuff. But you've also got a twist function on this, like a lot of sort of cheaper joysticks, so you can have a rudder function on there. Um, but of course what we've seen is that there is also uh, this control here for rudder. Now what that means is that this in particular is probably good for something like Elite Dangerous. Um, because if you played Elite Dangerous or any of those other space simulators like that, um, you tend to have sort of like thrust vectoring in in games like that. So it's great if if you if you want to sort of like fly around in your space fighter and stuff like that. But if you want to start using using thrust vectoring up or down or what have you, um, that's going to give you the option to do it because you haven't just got one sort of rudder axis. You've got two, and that's kind of useful. Um, I guess on flight simulators you could have something like. Uh, I don't know, maybe your, your, your rudder on this axis here and then your, your, that, this for like your steering tiller on the ground or maybe the other way around, um, depending on, on what your preference is. So one of the big plus points of this is that um, it's got a lot of axes as well as a lot of buttons. Uh, and the more, <laughs> more buttons you've got uh, and the more axes you've got, um, the better you're going to do. So uh, pretty good. Now, Let's uh, let's see how it looks when we set it up on the desk and uh, how it how it fits there, and then what we'll do is we'll we'll crank something up and we'll uh, we'll give it a whirl, see how easy it is to install. So pretty good so far. Um, but just before we do that, let's have a look at this, uh, this little manual um, and see what we get in this. I'm you know I don't imagine it'll be um, massively detailed. Um, well, there you go. So, uh, T Flight Hotas X um, for PC and PlayStation 3. Now, no, of course, that this is um, will work on a PlayStation or it will work on, on a PC. Um, and that has probably contributed to the fact that it's um, a little bit cheaper than you'd probably normally expect to pay for things like this because obviously you, they've, uh, they've got the economy of scale. Uh, of being able to produce something for two markets rather than one. The, um, the advent of um, consoles like uh, the Xbox and the PlayStation has kind of done for for joystick production a little bit. They, you know, you, you certainly don't see as many joysticks available as you used to. Um, used to they used to be kind of ten a penny and, uh, and not very expensive. Um, and now you're sort of having to get your hand in your pocket a little bit more. Uh, to get hold of them. So, uh, with regard to the um, the PC and PlayStation, switchable mode there. 
um, for whether you get the thing to work on a PC or whether you get it to, to work on an Xbox. And then we've got a little manual here. Um, so, a little bit of an explanation of what the buttons are there. And then, um, and it's in a few languages as well. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and then you've got the diagram of the axis mapping for flight simulator and then you've got Tom Clancy's Hawks um, and that's about it so not, ex <laughs> not exactly the most, most comprehensive manual either um, but you know joysticks you plug them in and you select the buttons in your options of, uh, of your simulator or what have you so no rocket science anyway Let's check it out when it's uh, when it's all plugged in. <coughs> okay, so here we are with uh, everything plugged in. Uh, I plugged it all in. It picked it all up straight away, no problem. Uh, and I've cranked up a Lockheed Martin's um, B3D. This is uh, version 4.5, so it's the most recent one as I'm making this video. I've only been out a couple of weeks. Um, and you can see the things sat on the desktop, as I say, everything got picked up. Uh, the only thing I have done is I've switched the rudder axis to uh, these two little controls on the, on the back side of the throttle. Um, they originally, um, when I cranked it up, they mapped to the uh, joystick twist function. I'm not a big fan of, uh, of using that. I think I, I think I prefer the one on the rudder. I mean, ordinarily I would probably use rudder pedals, but sometimes rudder pedals can be a bit of a pain in the ass because they have a big big uh, floor footprint if you will and they don't work too well under this desk so uh, I haven't actually got those plugged in at the moment but normally I would use uh, a set of SATA ruler pedals which are as I say rather large anyway let's uh, let's give this a whirl uh, if you're curious about the aeroplane incidentally uh, the aeroplane is um, the aeroplane heaven uh, globe swift um, which is this thing um, little uh, little late thirties, early forties um, private aeroplane. Uh, nice fun thing if you if you you like little private aeroplanes. Uh, now, uh, when I plugged all this in to uh, the computer and then fired up Lockheed Martin's prepared, and this is prepared version four point five, by the way, the most current one. What it did was it mapped the rudder to the joystick twist function. Not a big fan of that personally, uh, so I've switched it to the, um, the two little controls on the back side of the throttle. Um, I've not messed around with any of the calibration on it, um, so I don't know what it's going to be like by default, but I guess we're going to find out. Um, so let's, uh, let's turn this thing around. So, bit of brakes. Uh, got to be a little bit careful with this being a tail dragger. And the rudder response seems to be okay. We've got that thing lined up. Bit of opposite rudder. Like that. Hat switch seems to to work all right there. Um, so uh, there we are, lined up on the runway, and uh, I'll uh, I'll pop it back in the cockpit view. And uh, let's uh, let's get this thing in the air. Here we go. If you're, if you're curious as to why you can't hear the engine noise, by the way, uh, I probably would have uh, probably would have muted it anyway for the purposes of this video. But I normally use it on the, the headphones that you might be able to see hung up on the uh, on the the corner of my monitor. Um, but I don't want to be talking over over engine noise, so uh, I'll uh, I'll happily have it with uh, with no engine noise. Um, Plenty of airspeed there, so uh, let's get this thing in the air. Swap it to an external view, now we'll get the gear up. Now obviously, with all these buttons all over this joystick, <laughs> I could start mapping it to, uh, to sort of uh, gear up to, to various buttons and stuff like that if I wanted to. Ordinarily what I do is I would normally have sort of like uh, nose up and nose down trim 
on a couple of buttons um, around about this area here um, or possibly on, on this this uh, this rudder control here um, so I've not actually got any uh, any trim mapped at the moment or if there is trim mapped then then I don't know <laughs> which which buttons it's actually using so uh, this is this is kind of one wanted to to nose dive a little bit at the moment but um, in terms of how this joystick works it seems very smooth um, the uh, the default tension that it's on I could tension this up a little bit more but it seems okay uh, on the, the tension settings um, seems alright yeah, this uh, back on the inside view and uh, yeah seems okay uh, I might be inclined to sort of mess around with uh, the control sensitivity a little bit but it's not actually that bad uh, and we can usually get a pretty good idea of, uh, of how, how well the joystick's handling uh, by the fact that if I've not messed around with anything on it um, Am I going to be able to land this thing without too much trouble? So uh, let's give that a whirl, shall we? Uh, and see if we can uh, see if we can land this thing. So uh, since I haven't got any uh, any flaps mapped on this thing, um, I'm just going to use the uh, the keyboard to do that. Got some flaps down, and we'll get some gear down. Uh -huh. Just make sure. There we go. The gear is coming down. Uh, and we've got a green light for the gear. So we're lining up. This, incidentally, if you're looking at it, is totally um, stock um, P3D version 4.5, with the exception of one thing. I added my Chox hanger scenery uh, to it. Um, other than that, I've not done anything to this. I've not installed... Uh, any any sort of weather add-ons or add-on airports or anything like that, and the only reason that uh, that a few planes are installed is because, of course, with uh, with Lockheed Martin's prepared, you install a lot of airplanes externally. So when you update the client, um, it still finds things, and you don't have to reinstall them, which is one of the nice things about uh, P3D, of course. Um, yeah. This uh, this controller is very nice. I'm not having any problems uh, any problems lining this thing up at all. Um, very easy to control uh, and very responsive. And uh, as I say, I haven't even really messed around with any of the sensitivities on the thing. This thing uh, seems to be nice to use. You can do it. There we go. Bring that nose up. Look at that. Butter. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, nice joystick. Um, and obviously, with all, all of these axes and stuff like that, if you... You, uh, you play things like, I don't know, Elite Dangerous or what have you, where you have to have loads of... Uh, loads of buttons for all the systems and loads of axis controls for all the movement and stuff like that then obviously uh, something like this is a bit of a bonus. Now um, this, just to talk about the, uh, since, since the purpose of this is just to talk about the joystick, this is, it's not the cheapest um, joystick that Thrustmaster make but it is one of the cheapest that they make. Um, obviously they make a, a much more expensive and much more substantially made um, HOTAS throttle and stick combination. This thing is, um, I think they list it as, as being somewhere around about the, the, the 50 quid mark, $50, something like that, 50 euros, there's really not a lot in a lot of difference uh, in conversion rates these days. Uh, but if you look about, you can find it for less. I got this off um, Amazon, I think, and I paid 37 quid for it, 37 pounds sterling, which is really not a lot of money for, 
for this much joystick. I think delivery might have been a couple of quid, it might have been free, I can't exactly remember. Um, and it was delivered to a, a local store and I, and I collected it from there because unfortunately uh, what the internet has done um, is it's kind of killed off local um, local computer hardware shops, certainly where I live. There's, uh, there's only a couple of places uh, that do that these days. There's PC World, which is uh, about as much use as a chocolate teapot. Uh, in fact, when I went in PC World, they didn't have one single joystick at all. Not one. Um, uh, which I was, I was quite surprised about. There is, a, there is a local computer shop not too far from me, but it has weird opening times and it's only a very, very small one and they're more concerned with uh, with building PCs and servicing them than, uh, than selling stuff. So I, I, I must admit, it was short when I went there, so I didn't look at everything that they had in there. I'm sure they've probably got a couple of joysticks in there, but um, I wouldn't expect them to have a massive range. So uh, what I did was I went online and got it from Amazon uh, and chose to have it delivered to a local store where I would collect it. And that was within 24 hours. So convenience wise, it's not the end of the world um, that there aren't quite so many places. And uh, as, as I say, uh, 37 pounds for, uh, for this is not bad. Um, you, there are, as I alluded to earlier, there are um, less joysticks available these days because there's more of that PS3 and Xbox sort of PlayStation controller stuff going on um, and the fact that this is is um, compatible with the um, PlayStation as well as a PC um, has, has given the, um, the economy of scale to be able to produce this thing so that's good but as I say it's not the most expensive uh, Thrustmaster joystick by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, in fact, as I say, it's the, the second cheapest one that they make, but it seems okay. Um, how, it, how much it stands up to, to abuse is, is another matter. Um, I, I guess that depends on sort of the, the what micro switches are, are in the thing and, and what have you. Uh, and if, if the thing subsequently falls apart within a week, then, then what I will do is I'll, I'll update this, this video review and, uh, and say, oh, this thing's terrible or what have you. Um, and similarly, if, uh, if it holds up pretty well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know that it is holding up pretty well. But um, first impressions of it, it's quite nice. As I say, I need to mess around with it and assign stuff, but um, fits on the desk nice. Um, has a good feel to it. Has a reasonable amount of weight to it. Plugs in, no problem. Um, Picked it, picked it up straight away. Um, seems to do everything <laughs> that you want it to. So, uh, not really, uh, not really any complaints about it in terms of uh, in terms of it being able to do stuff. And so we just check out on the external view there. So uh, the rudder control on the throttle, and you can see there it is. That seems to be working okay. The throttle control, push that forward. Quick enough response on that. Bit of left aileron and right aileron. If if I had any sort of criticism of that, I'd, I'd say that maybe I need to sort of pick up the, the speed response of it. It seems a bit lazy uh, at the minute. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can tweak it a little bit. And then of course, uh, elevators. Uh, and I would um, personally um, mess around with it and put the trim controls on, on, a, on a couple of the thumb switches. Uh, because the whole point of this is it is supposed to be a HOTAS system hands-on throttle and stick um, and if you know anything about that terminology you will know that it really sort of originally the first first aeroplane to to really make good use of that was probably the General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon um, which is now the Lockheed Martin um, F-16 uh, uh, and that is the, on the on the F-16 on, on the throttle in the F-16 cockpit it has a little switch here on the throttle control of the F-16 which is called the dogfight switch um, and that is a button that you can press and it will instantly switch the APG-66 radar to, to the the right mode for a dogfight where it's doing, I think it does uh, TWS mode on the radar and sets up the gun and gets your sidewinder missiles ready, all with one press of a button 
and then of course all the uh, all the other stuff that you need to do like selecting missiles and uh, and selecting your guns and playing around with your radar modes and stuff like that is all on buttons on the throttle and the joystick so that is the uh, that is the hands on throttle and stick concept as in you are flying and fighting and you're not having to take your hands off the controls and start messing around with the uh, the up front display or or the the little uh, the little screens on either side and stuff like that so that's the concept and obviously that is useful for flight simulators particularly if you use something like DCS world or what have you I mean if you've got the the new or relatively new F-14 Tomcat uh, for DCS World or, or, or I don't know, maybe an A-10 Thunderbolt or something like that. Uh, there's a lot of switchology going on in those sorts of things. If you play um, Falcon, for example, the F-16, this thing would be ideal for it because it's virtually identical to an F-16's throttle uh, and very similar to an F-16's joystick. Um, but of course then if you start using space simulators the more buttons the better and as alluded to in uh, that little jokey intro that I did uh, it doesn't go amiss in even something as basic as, as a, uh, a P-36 or a Spitfire or what have you the more buttons that you have um, the better you can do and uh, particularly if you fight online against someone else because <laughs> if you haven't got one of these hotel systems, I can guarantee the person you go up against will have. Um, especially when you can get something like this for, as I say, 37 quid. You can't really even have a decent night out for, for that kind of money. Well, I can't anyway. <laughs> um, so, uh, really not a lot of money and um, seems to do the job. There you go. Thrustmaster T-Flight Hotas X. Hope you enjoyed that. Check out the, the next um, Chucks Hanger video, which is um, probably coming up in, in about four days' time. Um, not entirely sure what I'm going to cover. I've got, got, got a few ideas, a few interesting ones. Um, I'll see how it goes. But I can guarantee you that whatever it is, it's going to be fun. Um, because uh, And certainly interesting, because it is my intention to make them all fun and interesting. So uh, uh, if, you, if you like aviation and you're interested in all this kind of stuff um, then make sure you hit that like and subscribe button there and uh, I'll see you for the next video. Bye!